His Excellency. The Assembly will now hear a statement by His Excellency Eneli Soseni Sopoaga, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Utilities of Tuvalu. I ask protocol to ex escort His Excellency. Thank you. Mr. Vice President of the General Assembly, Excellencies, it gives me great pleasure on behalf of the government and people of Tuvalu to address the General Assembly and to congratulate through you, Vice President, Her Excellency, the Madam President of the 73rd Session of the UNGA. Tuvalu has full confidence that in her leadership, and that, together with the Secretary General's support, uh, to further advance our work in the United Nations. Tuvalu also reaffirms its commitment to the noble values and principles of the United Nations, of which it has high pride to be a member since we joined in the year 2000. We also want to acknowledge with sincere affection the passing of the late Kofi Annan, former Secretary General, and his outstanding contribution to the work of this body, leading us from the dusk of the past century into the dawn of the 21st century, including, of course, the considerate admission of my country to this great body. Excellencies, we welcome the theme of the 73rd General Debate, making the United Nations relevant to all people global, because global leadership and shared responsibilities for peaceful, uh, equitable, and sustainable uh, societies is critical. It rightly reminds us that we now need responsible global leadership more than ever. Leadership that values multilateralism, trust, and the moral responsibility to help those who need help. This is the leadership the world needs to succeed against the defining global challenges of the United Nations, particularly its Agenda 2030, in particular with reference to dealing with climate change and environmental degradations. Excellencies, this year was characterized by the fear of a potential nuclear war, as we have not learned from the wrongs of our past. Now we have nuclear weapons that are much more powerful than those experienced and dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Numerous nuclear tests in our region, the Pacific, have caused unimaginable uh, damages to en the environment and the health of our people. Some of our islands are still coping with the effects of nuclear radiation decades after those tests. The recent Pacific leaders meeting in Nauru reaffirmed our commitment to peace and security in the Pacific region. Under the Boe Declaration on the Pacific Regional Security, we are calling for urgent actions, not only on military, but also on human security issues. In this spirit, two days ago, Tuvalu signed the Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty, which offers the international community an opportunity to ban this weaponry. We, were, we urge all of us to take up concrete actions to make our way, world safe. Excellencies, non-communicable disease and tuberculosis hit the poor and vulnerable particularly hard and drive them more deeper into poverty. We commend the successful outcomes of the high-level meetings of the General Assembly, but the rhetoric alone is not enough. They must be followed by meaningful actions on the ground to drive healthy lifestyles and diets, of course supported by adequate financing and monitoring modalities to ensure integrated progress. Addressing this in a manner of urgency is critical, and therefore to this end, we in Tuvalu have introduced 
uh, healthy uh, styles of living by initiating all Friday afternoon sweat breaks to all workers in workplaces and in the villages to encourage more active and healthy lifestyle. We need practical support, however, of funding and resources from the United Nations uh, and also the international community. Excellencies for SITS and LDCs, the achievement of the, uh, the United Nations Sustainable Development Goals depends entirely on how we can address issues of climate change. Current global warming trends spells a very bleak and miserable future for small island developing states, especially for low-lying atolls like Tuvalu. A future that demands huge investments on mitigation and adaptation that are simply beyond our capabilities. The pre Paris Agreement offers us a, fly, a laugh line, but the current commitments in the Paris Agreement constitutes only a third of what is needed to avoid catastrophic consequences of climate change. This is a direct threat to our existence and survival, as already established based on the IPCC assessments, unless global community steps up, our actions to significantly lower greenhouse gas emissions, cities like Tuvalu will disappear completely within the next 30 to 50 years. Disappear completely. I repeat again what I said in COP21 in Paris. Just imagine if you were in my shoes, how would you feel? And what would you do? Climate change is a weapon of mass destruction. It is slaughtering fellow human beings world over. The United Nations cannot and must not allow the biggest greenhouse gas emitters to turn away from their moral duty and responsibility to urgently reduce greenhouse gas emissions and to save cities like Tuvalu with appropriate adaptation support and resources. It will be shameful for the whole of humanity to ever allow Tuvalu to disappear. Every single year wasted with no actions on climate change draws Tuvalu a year closer to its total demise from wealth. But Tuvalu, your excellencies, will never give up. We will fight to protect and save our islands, our people, our culture, and our future. We appeal to this noble house not to allow the catastrophic consequences to happen. Tuvalu, whose islands and lagoons were used by the American forces in the Second World War to conquer the enemy in the Pacific, urges President Trump and the United States of America to rejoin the Paris Agreement so we can all paddle together to save the world against our single most threatening enemy of climate change. Failing this, Tuvalu proposes that we, the signatories of the Paris Agreement, quickly return to Paris to critically and urgently reassess our mitigation pledges and dramatically increase our efforts to reduce greenhouse gas pollution. We cannot allow one country to desert the process and derail our collective efforts. The next conference of parties in Poland is a critical important milestone for climate change action. We must ensure that the implementation guidelines for the Paris Agreement are concluded. We must also ensure that the Talanoa Dialogue uh, leads to a strong political declaration and decision that responds to the IPCC 1.5 degrees Celsius report and sets a pathway for enhanced climate change action. In this regard, Mr. President, Excellencies, we seek a commitment for, from every nation to enhance their efforts to reduce greenhouse gas emissions as a matter of urgency. Our own part from Tuvalu, we are fully committed to shifting to 100% renewable energy by 2020, despite our negligent greenhouse gas emissions. I extend our deep appreciation to the governments of India and France for their initiative on solar energy development under the International Solar Alliance. And of course, to the European Union, New Zealand, Taiwan, Italy, 
Austria, Japan, and the World Bank for their support on energy efficiency and solar energy development in my country, Tuvalu. I wish to acknowledge also the efforts of not notable members of the Security Council in bringing climate change to the fore of its peace and security agenda. This is genuine commitment to addressing the most important challenges of our time and the greatest single threat to humanity. It is our humble hope that the whole of the Security Council membership can agree to have climate change as a permanent agenda item. Madam President, Excellencies, we believe that the nexus between climate change and security is fundamental. For a nation like Tuvalu, our security and our future are contingent on urgent action to address climate change. We therefore reiterate our call for the appointment of a special representative of the UN Secretary General on climate change and security. We also call on the Security Council to appoint a special rapporteur to produce regular review of global, regional, and national security threats caused by climate change. Excellencies, we welcome the successful conclusion of the intergovernment negotiation on global compacts on mi migration and applaud the spirit of responsible leadership and multilateral cooperation to support the ever-increasing populations that are being affected by conflicts and environmental crises. We believe, however, that all human rights of climate change displaced people should be protected under an international legal agreement. We therefore reiterate the Tuvalu proposal for a United Nations resolution on the establishment of a legal process to protect the human rights of people displaced by climate change. Excellencies, this year, Tuvalu has proposed to remain an LDC, a least developed country, because of our ability to achieve sustainable development being severely compromised by our vulnerability to climate change. We noted with appreciation the support that we have received from development partners and friends to advance this proposal. However, it is not it is our earliest belief that SIT's small island developing states' unique extreme vulnerabilities must be considered as a fundamental criteria of graduation. Excellencies, the particular concerns of highly vulnerable SIT's like Tuvalu cannot be ignored. In our NSSD, National Sustainable Strategy for Sustainable Development, Te Kakenga Tolu, our unique vulnerability is recognized as enemy number one in achieving sustainable development goals. In this regard, we call on the ECOSOC to create a special category for SITS so that we can be afforded special considerations in a similar fashion to that uh, received by least developed countries. We note the United Nations Secretary General's recently released report on the assessment uh, resulting from the evolving mandates of the small island developing states units of the Secretariat. The expanded responsibilities of the SITS unit in UN DESA and OHRLLs should be matched with expanded resources. We also welcome the review of the Samoa pathway and hope that this review will truly re reflect and response to the unique circumstances of SITS and their unique economic, environmental, and social vulnerabilities. In the South Pacific, we are making small steps to address this vulnerability. We are in the process of developing a Pacific Island climate change insurance facility, and we seek support from the UN-wide system to assist us in developing this strategy, this facility. Madam uh, President, Excellencies, our small island economy is inextricably linked to the oceans. The oceans is us, our culture, our life, and our survival. However, with global warming, acidification, and coral bleaching, solid waste, and plastic pollution, inshore and offshore stocks of fisheries on which national economies depend 
are gravely affected. The UN must provide the strongest leadership possible to drive genuine partnerships to address these issues. Excellencies, the exclusion of Taiwan from the United Nations systems deny these 23 million people their fundamental rights to participate. Already, Taiwan is a responsible and able partner to Tuvalu and many other countries in many other regions, in many regions of the world, and could only do more if it is allowed its rightful place and role in our global efforts to achieve sustainable development. Tuvalu believes the UN has to make the necessary arrangements to let Taiwan participate in the meetings, activities, and mechanisms under the United Nations processes, including those under the UN specialized agencies. In a similar manner, we believe long in unilateral economic embargo on Cuba directly constrains the development aspiration of the people of Cuba. It neglected the human rights and the spirit of cooperation espoused under the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. Likewise, we believe the United Nations must also engage with the people of West Papua to find lasting solutions to their struggles. Excellencies, next year in August 2019, Tuvalu will host the 50th Pacific Islands Forum of Leaders. I extend our humble invitation to all Pacific Islands uh, Forum leaders, our friends, and especially our development partners, bilateral and multilateral, to join us in Tuvalu. It will still be there, I believe. We want to put on record our deepest appreciation to the governments of Taiwan and India for their generous support to help us prepare for this important uh, big regional event. Sim similarly, I want to acknowledge similar support from the governments of India, Taiwan, and the Republic of Korea to help us prepare to host this uh, forum meeting next year. Excellencies, on the 1st of October, next Monday, Tuvalu will celebrate its 40th anniversary of independence, whilst holding high our national pride in being an independent nation, we fully acknowledge that Tuvalu would never have achieved such a status without the due consideration of members of this august body, to whom I now, on behalf of the people of Tuvalu, want to offer our sincere gratitude. In our stride forward, we acknowledge with deep appreciation the generosity of all our development partners, particularly our traditional partners, the Republic of China, Taiwan, India, Republic of Korea, Australia, New Zealand, the European Union, Japan, the UK World Bank, and the Asian Development Bank, and many others who I have not mentioned. As we pedal our canoe over the next 40 years, we seek the continuing goodwill of the United Nations family to further advancing our achievements based on genuine and durable partnerships. In conclusion, Your Excellencies, Tuvalu strongly believes that our collective effort to achieve the Sustainable Development Agenda aspirations 2030 and to secure global peace, security, and prosperity will be severely compromised unless we all paddle together as a family to urgently address climate change, to save Tuvalu, to save the world. God bless Tuvalu. God bless the United Nations. I thank you, President, Excellencies, Tuvalu Modetua. On behalf of the General Assembly, I wish to thank His Excellency Enili Soseni Sopuaga, Prime Minister and Minister for Public Utilities of Tuvalu, for the statement just made. And I request protocol 
to escort His Excellency. The Assembly will hear a statement by Her Excellency Sheikh Hasina, Prime Minister of the People's Republic of Bangladesh. May I request protocol to escort Her Excellency. Thank you.